Today's episode of Morning Coffee with Cameron is brought to you in part by Banzoogle. Banzoogle is a web creation service designed specifically for artists and musicians. Not only is it a great way to make a good looking and functional website, it's also a great way to start making an income off your music because all of your sales from your tracks to tickets to your shows to your sample packs are 100% commission free. If you're ready to get started with your website, you can use my link down in the description to get a free 30 day trial and save 15%. Howdy doody, mustache man book club time. In the 1956 novel Old Yeller, there's a boy and his dog. Some stuff happens, the dog gets bitten by a wolf with rabies, a bunch of emotional stuff happens, and it all comes down to one final scene. The dog, Old Yeller, is found to have rabies and can't be saved. The boy's mom goes into the house, grabs a rifle, walks back out, the boy grabs the rifle from his mom, and shoots the dog to end its suffering. It's a pretty damn sad book. I give it maybe a soft 6 out of 10. But there is an important lesson here. Sometimes you have to understand how to admit to yourself when you've put forward every reasonable effort towards something that you can be expected to, and you have to know how to let something go as it is. Also, yeah, maybe don't let your kid shoot their dog. That's awful and probably very traumatizing. In almost any creative field, there's some variation of the phrase, art is never completed, just abandoned. And this is really the idea I want to explore in this video. This isn't really intended to be a video about perfectionism, although it'll inevitably be a theme here. Instead, I really want this video to be about the willingness to relinquish control of something. There's another side to this video on the art of giving up, but I think that's something I want to explore in a separate video. As creators, this idea of shooting the dog is something that's unbelievably hard to do. Every creative project is your own flesh and blood and sweat and tears formed into this perfect ethereal presence to be marveled at, but this means it's also far too easy to fall into a mindset of always needing to find fulfillment by feeling like you've one-upped yourself every single time. Okay, shitty framing device here. Let's say you were to jump one inch off the ground, and then tell yourself that for every subsequent jump you only needed to jump one inch higher. It's going to be pretty easy at first, then it's going to get harder, and then it's going to become outright impossible. If you were the world record holder for the highest jump, you would run out after only 96 jumps. As creators, we know that these jumps aren't really all created equal, and only certain jumps are going to be worth releasing and make that final stage of being put out into the world. So we're not really looking at 96 completed efforts. We're only really looking at 96 attempts before we'd have to just give up completely. Let's consider two different scenarios here. In scenario one, some friends come over to your house and one of them asks you to draw a funny cartoon with them while you wait for your other friend to get ready to go out for the evening or whatever. You spend about 15 minutes on it, it's hilarious, and then you throw it away and go on with your night. Moving on to scenario two, let's say scenario one never happened, but a client commissions you to draw a funny cartoon. It's a last second project, you've only got a day to do it, and with all the other work you've got, you really only have maybe an hour or two to make it happen. Let's say you drew the exact same picture that you and your friend drew. Is it good enough? As a creator, I'm sure like me, you've run into both of these scenarios many, many times, and this sounds pretty familiar, but why is it that scenario one is so effortless, but scenario two leaves us so unbelievably paralyzed. A little while ago, I hung out with Jason Graves. He's a composer for games like Dead Space, Tomb Raider, Fortnite, Far Cry Primal, and about a billion other things. He's also got a YouTube channel, if you haven't seen it. It's pretty cool stuff. You really should check it out. After a while of talking, Jason and I got on the subject of, I guess what I would call fulfillment burnout. It's this really weird thing, and it was really the inspiration for this whole video. I feel like this is a conversation I've had so many times with a lot of my other creative professional friends, but I feel like it's something that does exist at all levels of the creative industry. And I know that this sounds super conceited and entitled, but it is very real. If you're playing a new video game, you practice and play and learn the rules and start to get the skills you need to win. You improve your aim or whatever, you learn the controls, you do all the basics, and you take down the enemy for the very first time. And you're thrilled because 
you did the thing. Eventually, though, after slaying a few thousand hordes of the undead or whatever, it's just another day at the office, and it's sort of a sad and bleak reality. The weird twist of the knife, though, and I'm sure you've run into this too, is I can't tell you how many times I have absolutely worked my ass off on a project for it to just not get picked up or just fall apart. And then I've done other projects, even for major clients, where I feel like I just kind of did the thing as requested. I don't feel like I did anything particularly extraordinary. You know, I gave it my best work I could and whatever, but didn't do anything to break the mold. And yet I would receive way more praise than I did from other projects where I felt like I gave it everything I had. And that's super frustrating, but I think therein lies the answer. I guess what I'm getting at here is that art is like a weird game of chess. Sometimes there's just no more meaningful moves to make. With creative work, you can't keep chasing one more tweak or one more detail because there's always going to be another one and you can't ever really fully finish something. Creative work isn't like a puzzle or a game or something where there's a clear endpoint. It's a matter of knowing that you can't keep trying to search for that endpoint because there's always going to be one more thing to be done. Let's jump back to our two hypothetical scenarios here, the just for fun and the work. Whenever there's money on the line, especially, or even just the fear of an idea being rejected or disliked or whatever, it is just so frustratingly impossible to commit to anything because there could be someone out there who notices that, yeah, that shade of blue is maybe a little bit off, or yeah, there is something kind of weird about the drums or something, or maybe the lemon and garlic salt wasn't the right way to really bring forward the right flavor palette on that pan sauce. We invent these stupid hypothetical gremlins for the sake of giving ourselves a reason to just not fucking commit to doing anything. But when we're doing something just for fun, it's so easy to let loose that death grip on the creative reins for the sake of just letting the pieces fall where they may. I mean, it's sure, it might not be this thing that's this flawless marvel, but nothing ever really is. I, I can't remember where I heard this, but it's a really good phrase, I think, when you need to regain that perspective on just the big picture of everything. It's that you don't get to decide your magnum opus. The people do. In the moment, all you can do is work towards your idea and to make it happen to the best of your abilities. It's not always all that helpful to think and analyze and create new lines for the sake of reading between them. If the work stands on its own merit and it's something that's functional, then it's often close enough for jazz. In my case with music, I can't name a single time where I've ever been listening to a song with my wife or a friend or a family member or something where they've been like, yeah, dude, I, I can't believe they didn't use an 1176 on the vocal chain. This sucks. Or, yeah, I, I can't believe that they didn't use Pro Q3 to EQ out the 200 hertz on the snare drum and didn't even make it dynamic. Huh, this is unlistenable trash. No one cares. It's the weird unspoken secret of creativity. People do not give nearly as much of a fuck as you think they do. We always put things under a microscope because we live in the microcosm of the process. If you can let go of the work and be happy about leaving it as it is, it just becomes another drop in the rainstorm of art. If you're reasonably happy with the result, it's done. Of course, as creators, it's natural to fall into this sort of mindset that everything you do has to be the best thing you've ever done. And I think that that's a healthy mindset to an extent, but I think the real intention there is that in knowing you've done the best thing you could have done that day and given the circumstance. It's that idea of fulfillment burnout. You can't only be fulfilled by doing the best thing you've ever done because that's always going to be relative. Instead, the fulfillment has to come from just the process of doing. I guess it's sort of like what my grandpa says of if something's worth doing, then it's worth doing right. And doing things right, you know, it doesn't mean doing things infinitely complex or adding all these little tweaks to approach this seemingly perfect result. Getting things right is just getting the fucking job done. Sometimes there aren't any more meaningful moves to make. Sometimes you just have to be willing to let things go as they are. 
Sometimes, you have to shoot the dog. Well, hey, darling, that was a bit of a spicy meatball there, wasn't it? And uh, if you enjoyed this here picture show film for eyeballs on the internet, you can subscribe. It's free. Uh, I make these videos every week or so, and you can get more of them. I'll be there with you. If you want to support the channel and make more videos like this possible, you can become a patron. My patrons are awesome people, and you could even join up and print out like a little certificate for yourself to hang up and point at and make everyone feel bad about themselves for not being like you. There's presets and samples and even a masterclass thing I did on building your own sampler instruments, and I'll be working on some other stuff for that soon of tutorials and whatever. If you have any other thoughts on this video, you can drop them in the comments. If you got suggestions for other topics or things you'd like to see me make a picture show film for eyeballs for, let me know. Until then, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And of course, as always, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome.